welcome to my vlog it's in Kessa again um the vlog is is actually called in Kessa's Corner I've named the channel in Kessa's Corner but when I started I named it Man Kessa but you know I decided I'll just change it in Kessa's Corner seems more like it so that's that's what this channel is called now so if you do want to find me look for in Kessa's Corner um for those joining me for the first time I'm a new vlogger I've just started um and I've, I've had two vlogs before now, this is the third vlog and I tend to discuss what's going on or what I feel the situation is happening around us or what, what has happened, what has happened to me. Um, so this vlog is one of those vlogs that actually came from, from um, food of thought where I, or where I was thinking or where I have been in the past. Uh, two or three days as a result of some news I heard so um I actually will put it this way tell it to you as a story uh, the story of a child named Sean whom I knew personally of course I've changed the name you know for privacy reasons privacy and legal reasons so I have changed that name um Sean is my son's friend or used to be my son's friend they grew up together in the same neighborhood they went to secondary school together and uh, they were just a couple of young boys. Then my son is a he's a lot older now. He's in he's in university. Um, a couple of young boys growing up together, just doing their thing. And I used to see them, you know, walk back from school, have a little laugh. And it was just young people being young people. Um, and so I, you know, just used to ask, you know, just to make sure I know who he's hanging out with or who he or where he was at that stage of his life. I used to ask him questions and he said, oh, that's my friend, this is my friend that are going to the park. So I always was on it, was on what my son was doing. So that was fine. So in regards to this other child called Sean, he was my son's friend. And my son used to tell me, mommy, Sean is so intelligent. He's so smart, you know. He, he doesn't behave like the rest of us. He actually made a joke saying, oh, you know, mommy, out of all of my friends, Sean, Sean is, a, is a white boy in black skin because so, um, Sean has a different attitude and outlook to life and, you know, for, came from a, he had a different perspective. But as things, as they got older, um, things changed, I guess. Things changed. And Sean started getting into arguments with the teacher and... Um, the teacher and he used to you know and then eventually he got excluded now before he got excluded he, he would sit near my son and they would have a lot of banter in class and the teacher said you know what x and y you need to sit apart anytime you sit together you tend to chat a lot and so they kind of started sitting apart in class and you know even when he's tempted to go over to chat with my son with my son that sean is he would say you know what i'm gonna stay away from you because i don't want to distract you um and i want you to be able to focus and concentrate on the lesson or whatever the teacher is teaching us and that was that was fine you know so it was okay um it was okay so um that way they kind of grew apart because they said that sitting apart they did, there wasn't so much banter in between them anymore um, but I, I, well, I thought, I thought it was interesting when I discussed with my son, I said, so he knew he's distracting you. He knows that when two of you sit together, two of you have a little bit of a chatter, too much chatter going on and he knows it's not good. So he's actually advising you, you know, let's sit apart so you can focus. And so that was how they started growing apart. And then, um, they grew as they started going, going through the years, um, Sean, as I said, started getting into confrontations with the teachers and once through a chair at the teacher let which led to his exclusion so he was excluded from school and, and had to go to another school and my while my son continued in this school and every once in a while my son would they would run into each other and he would say hi hi how are you doing how are you doing and sean would tell him um stay in school read your books don't make the same mistakes i have made now that really touched me because these are two young boys that are the same age the same stage in life and one actually is advising the other or he knows what's good for the other and saying staying in school read your books don't be like me so he realized his situation was not good he realized he was he's been kicked out of school and you know all of a sudden he's found himself in, in another institution and not with the people he grew up with or the people he, he started off with and you know my sons didn't really see him after then my son went up to college um, but once in a while, he Sean would contact him on the PlayStation and they would have a conversation. And then he didn't hear from him anymore. And then a couple of days ago, 
uh, two or three days to be precise ago. My son called me and he was sobbing and he was sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. I said, what's wrong? He said, oh, mommy, Sean's, Sean's going to jail. And that shook me because I remember this young uh, 13, 14 year old boy moving around playing, have a, having a, a bit of a banter with his mates. And I said, why? And he said, mommy, he allegedly he, he, he stabbed somebody. And so he has been jailed for 18 years. But um, I think they said 14, four years of that will be on license, something like that. And I really, I really felt so sad because I remember that young boy. And I started thinking, I said, you know, I said, I remember when he was going to school and things he, he started changing. I heard his mother had cancer. So somewhere along the line, he started changing. And then I, maybe the dynamics in the home was not the same for him when his mom had cancer. And he started going outside to the streets. And it really touched me because I felt at that point in time, when he started having these challenges, somebody should have reached out, somebody should have helped, something should have been done about it. Because he evolved from that stage, he acted out his anger, he acted out his fears, he was excluded from school. Well, my son went on to do his GCSEs and is now studying in university. He's in jail and both of them are the same age. It really touched me. So um, my 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 point today you know i felt really sober because my son was saying the system failed them and i said well actually they fail themselves or not they, not that they fail themselves my son said the system failed them and their families fail them and i just thought you know there was something going on in this child's home that wasn't addressed and this is how this child turned out this is a very intelligent knowledgeable child that shouldn't i felt should not have ended up where he is so he he attempted he stabbed somebody He's been, he's been jailed. He stabbed the person because he thought the person stole drugs from his gang. So he was already in a gang. So um, I felt so bad. He didn't have a family inside. So when you don't have a family inside, you look for a family outside. These children are looking for acceptance. They're looking for guidance. They're looking for where they can belong to. They're looking for, um, I'm trying not to crack up here. They're looking for a little bit of love. So um, I my, my vlog today is about, you know, I it's reach out and touch. If you know a child um in a bad situation or in a bad home i've told my son speak to the authorities there are so many schemes out there because a lot of the problems start in the home before we blame the authorities the problems start in the home we need to check our kids we need to find out what they're doing and when there are dynamics going on in the home that cannot be controlled we need to look for help reach out and touch these children so so you know children starting on the same level play level playing you know going to school together you know it's the same, living in the same neighborhood, one one ends up a lot worse than the other because circumstances and situations in their life changed. And all I'm saying today is it didn't have to be that way. I felt so sad, really, really super when I heard he's going to jail. I remember that young boy on the streets playing and, you know, walk, walking back from school and having a laugh. And also a very intelligent young boy at, at it because he knew it was wrong. He knew when to tell my son, no, 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 focus on your studies. No, 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 listen to the teacher. He knew it, but for some reason he couldn't apply it to his, himself. And that felt so sad. And so he joined the gang, he's selling drugs from them, he's being used, and now he's ended up in jail. And I'm thinking of a young boy, at what age? You're going to go in as a very young adolescent, and you're going to come out as a man. Years wasted. Time taken away from your life. And I felt so sad. Maybe because I knew this child, I used to see him and I knew him. I felt so sad about it. And so all, all my message is about today is that if there's a young person around you or it doesn't have to be around you or somebody you know that knows somebody, at times it's good to ask them questions. At times it's good to reach out and touch because it starts somewhere. These children don't just end up in the streets. It starts somewhere. They don't end up in jail. It starts somewhere. So they started somewhere and this has been the child's journey. And it's uh, it's been very sad. For me that this child is now is now where he is at this stage in his life while i'm rooting you know for my son to get on to graduate to, to do this and his his colleague is sitting down in jail very super very super please reflect about this if you have a child reach out there's so many schemes in place um or that that people that you can speak to when these children start struggling, let's identify, let's do something about it. It's everybody's responsibility. Don't say it's not my child. Mm -hmm. Don't say it's not mine. If you do know my relation, if you do know somebody or you do notice a child has changed the behavior, ask questions. It doesn't hurt to ask questions. Let's find out why. 
why are they where they are now? Because he's now where he is and he's also got a victim because the gentleman he stabbed luckily, hopefully I think survived. But it, there, there is a domino effect. It's not just the child being affected. There is an effect felt somewhere in society on somebody else's health who probably had nothing to do with this person's upbringing, problems, issues, nothing. Um, so I'm going to stop there today. This is this is my story today. This is Sean's story because we've got a lot of Sean's out there in society and these boys are just doing what they like because nobody's calling them to check them or nobody cares about that well being. Let's start asking questions. Let's it's a neighbor's son. I know people are very, very protective of their privacy, but if you think something's going on wrong, ask questions and let's stop this thing about lives getting out of control or or just being disorderly. All right then, thank you very much for your time. Um, I'm going to say bye now and see you on my next vlog. Cheers, bye.